Good morning. It's January 11th, 2023. Today, John Authors is out with a Bloomberg opinion piece on EM assets. So I thought it'd be helpful to unpack some of his data and connect it with the data that we see at Longbow so you can monitor related securities to determine whether there's any action you want to take. You know, he pointed to the recent EM rally. In this first chart that I'm showing you, you've got a ratio of EM to the U.S., those two indexes. And the rally in the ratio is over 20%. It's only had one other time that the rally has been this strong in 2016 after the China's financial crisis. Now what I want to do is look at a price chart of just EEM. That's a popular ETF with emerging markets, tracks the MSCI total return EM index. It's up over 20% since its two-year low. This is the eighth time in 35 years this has happened. You know, I always find it's helpful to look at positions that rhyme and talk about correlations and drivers. And I want to start with the U.S. dollar index in this next chart. So, again, we're going to look at um, a comparison in here. Uh, we know that historically there is an inverse correlation with the U.S. dollar. So a strong USD translates into higher debt service costs and tighter financial conditions in EM. So when the U.S. dollar weakened these past few months, it's not surprising that EM strengthened. The dollar is at a seven-month low, so that blue line is down. I highlighted it there in the little yellow. Um, and the white line, which is EM, is up. And we can see that the dollar has been in a recent decline, partially due to U.S. yields. Uh, basically, investors are hoping for a Fed pause, then pivot. Um, and here I've got the USD index. Um, it means that lower rates makes the U.S. less attractive for external investors and bonds rally often. That gun lack was out touting bonds and his amazing opportunity in his 40 plus year career. No doubt on the belief that, that rates are going to decline. So bonds will improve with their prices. But we know that the dollar typically is strong in periods of deflation when the growth of GDP is slowing and the growth of inflation is slowing. So we really have to watch those technicals. They're kind of at odds with each other. And we'll circle back with that. Another inverse relationship is with commodities. I'm going to show you another chart here. It's the Bloomberg Industrials Metals Index. You know, transactions are typically priced in U.S. dollars as a key reserve currency, and higher commodity prices usually coincide with a weaker dollar. Last year, the dollar strengthened as industrial commodities fell, showing the reverse recently. Um, but we know that the dollar and commodity prices generally have really long trends. And the question that we all have to be asking ourselves is, are we at the start of a new trend or is it just a blip in the prior continuing trend? So our dollar is going to keep being strong for a while here. Or is this the start of dollar down, you know, and other things up? And part of that question relates to China. So when they were on their property build and binge, commodities spiked. And that's not what we're going through here in 2023. This is more about reopening, not infrastructure. So we don't believe it's much as a driver in the past, uh, you know, it was as it was in the past. And we're not quite buying the multiple story. This is the last chart I'm going to show you before we go to Longbow. You know, this is the ratio of EM's PE to US PE. And so when valuations um, can be better here in the US for 14 years, roughly, like there's little periods where EM does better. For most of this time, blue is below the zero line. You have to say, is there something structural in here? Is this something where there's always going to be some type of whether it's volatility, risk, other type of discount? Um, you know, so we have to think about that. But now I want to watch, switch to Longbow because um, what I want to see is some of these trends in the signals. So I'm going to double click here. I'm going to go to my morning, um, which I put my stuff to talk about with you guys and take it off Kiss View. Sometimes it shows up on Kiss View. What I've got here on my screen, I've got the UUP, which is uh, the ETF for the dollar. I've got EEM, or we talked about the EEM, the EM ETF, and the FXI, which is a China large cap ETF, GLD, which is gold ETF, and then I've got a metals and mining XME ETF. And what we can see here is pretty interesting, right? Is that they're all neutral on their trading range. So I'm not um, thinking about doing anything today, um, but you're seeing that the dollar is getting near the low end of its trading range. And remember all those inverse correlations we talked about EEMs near the top, China's near the top, gold's near the top, metals and mining near the top. Um, so I think we have to be a bit careful of keeping along and buying into this narrative right now from a technical standpoint. The other thing I'd like to do is take a look at the, um, the volatility. 
And so what do we see on the vol? Sorry, this is um, being a little difficult for me because I'm on a laptop today. Um, is that short term, you know, it's neutral on the dollar, but bearish on the medium term. So we'd be expecting if this was a full time trend to see bearish in both. But then you've got bullish short term, bullish medium term for the rest of the signals. Um, and so, again, you've got that correlation, the inverse correlation going on. It's been pretty strong. Um, but if this were to reverse, so if somehow the dollar would strengthen because we're in a deflationary environment, you would see all these things unravel. Um, so what we would rather do if you're going to play this, right, is we want to wait until we're getting the dollar near the top end of the range and these signals for the EEM, FXI, gold and uh, metals and mining at the low end of the range if you're thinking that the dollar eventually is going to be keep on going down. So we want to be careful on the timing. The other thing I would point out that there's no core signals going on, so there's nothing particularly strong to do right now um, from a technical standpoint. Um, and I also like to show you that in terms of volatility, you know, you've got um, a premium on the dollar. So people are worried about it going down, but you've got a discount on China. So that China rally is going on probably because, you know, Morgan Stanley, Goldman, they're all coming out now, um, you know, waving the flag to reinvest in China here um, and EEM in general relative to the USD. Um, but we really need to see that dollar talking about it. You want the short term signal to be bearish, that medium term to be bearish. And if we're going to be looking at the UUP, right, you know, so you want the white near the low end here. Um, but I also want to see um, that, uh, that it's a continuation for some time. So I want to be pretty careful on that. That's all for today. Um, obviously a lot of people are thinking about this. You have to make your own uh, judgment of what you want to do. Um, but I thought I'd give you some tools to figure out how to look at these in concert with each other. Um, so you might also see some relative opportunities because they don't always move, um, each day together. So sometimes you get some opportunities that pop up. That's all for today. And I'll talk to you tomorrow.